In the following few lessons, we will be going over some fundamental principles of reasoning, which are sometimes called laws of thought. Note, however, that these laws don't work like the laws of physics. That is, a law of science describes events, like Newton's second law of motion, which says that the net force of any object will be equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. If an event turns out differently than the law of science predicts, then we know the problem is with the law and not with the universe's objects. By contrast, the laws of thought propose a standard for thought. When our actual reasoning practices depart from them, the problem is with our reasoning practices and not the law. A tentative analogy might be pursued here with societal laws, like every car must stop at a red light. When a car runs a red light, we don't say that our law didn't accurately predict this instance and then discard the law. We keep the law. The problem is with the car. Nevertheless, the principles expressed in these laws of thought are so basic to reasoning that some philosophers have argued that if one were to deny some or all of them, we couldn't reason at all. These include, first, the principle of non-contradiction, second, the principle of the excluded middle, and third, the principle of identity. These are considered to be fundamental principles upon which much of philosophical reasoning is based. This lesson will focus on the principle of non-contradiction, which itself was given in three separate formulations by Aristotle, the metaphysical formulation, the doxastic formulation, and the semantic formulation. Metaphysical formulation. It is impossible for the same thing to belong and not belong at the same time to the same thing in every respect. Metaphysics is a field of philosophy originally referring to those Aristotelian works that come after physics. Metaphysics deals with general and fundamental questions about the nature of reality beyond just the laws of physics. While the metaphysical form of the principle may seem like a complex and convoluted statement, all that it really says is that something cannot have a property and not have the same property in the same respect, where the expression in the same respect specifies the conditions in which that property applies. This stipulation is necessary insofar as a property might apply under some conditions, but not others. For example, the same blizzard wind can be cold for Noah and not cold for Jane, or the same blizzard wind can be cold for Noah now, but not cold for Noah an hour ago. When we specify, however, that the same wind cannot be cold and not cold for the same person or at the same time, then we say that the wind cannot both be cold and not cold for Noah now. Next is the doxastic formulation. Doxastic means of or relating to belief or opinion. Accordingly, the second version of the principle can be interpreted in either of two ways. First, as a statement about the psychological capabilities of the mind, or two, as a declaration of what it is rational to believe in general. While the metaphysical formulation of the principle of non-contradiction purports that it is impossible for objects themselves to hold and not hold the same property under the same conditions, this doxastic formulation concerns whether we, as rational thinkers, are ever justified to, or even able to, believe that the same object can hold and not hold the same property under the same conditions. More simply, the metaphysical formulation deals with how an object actually is, while a doxastic formulation deals with how we can and should understand the object. Then is the semantic formulation. No two contradictory propositions can be both simultaneously true or simultaneously false. Semantics refers to a field of linguistics, and oftentimes philosophy as well, that examines the meaning of linguistic units, which is often closely tied to the truth conditions of that unit. The semantic formulation of the principle refers to the idea that no two contradictory propositions can be true or false at the same time. Take for example the propositions, New York is a city, and New York is not a city. According to the semantic principle of non-contradiction, one of these must be true, and the other must be false. It cannot both be the case that New York is a city and that New York is not a city. Likewise, it cannot both be false that New York is a city and that New York is not a city. The semantic formulation differs from the first two formulations insofar as it captures the logical sentiment behind them. The first two formulations state principles about the possibility of objects to be X and not X at the same time, or principles about whether a subject is ever justified to believe that an object is X or not X at the same time. The semantic formulation simply reflects these two principles in their application to logic. To clarify further, let us introduce the distinction between contradictories and opposites. The principle of non-contradiction is concerned with the former. However, it has an ancestor in the famous passage of Plato's Republic, which is concerned with opposites. The principle of opposites. The same thing will not be willing to do or undergo opposites in the same part of itself in relation to the same thing at the same time. For example, 
cold and hot, tall and small, odd and even, are opposites. Contradictories, however, are strictly each other's negation. For example, cold and not cold, tall and not tall, and so on. In terms of the semantic version, this can also be formulated as follows. The proposition x is cold and it is not the case that x is cold are contradictories. Likewise, x is cold and x is not cold are contradictories, unless it is further specified that x is cold in some sense, but not in another, or that x is cold at some time or place, but not at another. In this section, let's look at some examples for each version of the principle. Metaphysical. This version could be shown through the truism that one could not both claim to be cold and not cold in the same way at the same time. Being cold implies not being cold and vice versa. In response, someone could perhaps propose an example of an individual standing in a tub of ice on a hot summer's day so as to be hot and cold at the same time. While this is true, it is not in contrast with the principle of non-contradiction. This is because in the person in the previous example is not hot and cold in the same way. As their feet are in the ice, this person would never claim their feet to be hot, just as their unsubmerged body would not be cold. So although this individual does in fact possess both of the properties at hand, they do not possess them in the same way. Doxastic. This version of the principle can be demonstrated simply, as you can't, for instance, look at a car and think to yourself that it is both beautiful and not beautiful at the same time in the same way. The third version, the semantic version, can be demonstrated by an attempt to assert as true that koalas are both are and not marsupials. Such a claim is simply illogical. In this lesson, we discussed the principle of non-contradiction. We introduced the three different versions of the principle, the metaphysical version, the doxastic version, and the semantic version. For the purposes of Aristotelian logic, the principle of non-contradiction is fundamental in philosophy, and understanding it is necessary to avoid making nonsensical claims.